the Block Party of Minecraft Podcast, episode 114. We're your hosts, Bearded Sloth. And Little C. Autobots, transform and roll out. This isn't a Transformers show, BS. You must be dreaming about the new Autocrafter block. Get all our info at theblockpartymc.com. Now let's get the block party started. I was dreaming about the Leave crafter. Leave it to him to just be sleeping during the intro and sleep podcasting. I'm so excited. I love automation in Minecraft. <sighs> I don't like automation. I like the more things done manually, the better. I, I'm i not that way. I like building the stuff to make it automated. I enjoy the building of the farm. It's not even the automation. It's not even the product that you get from it. It's the design of coming up with something to make it automated. Does that make sense? I guess I used to automate like everything I could. Any tiny block that could be automated, I would automate it. And then it just got so boring because you just get everything so quickly. I think grinding for stuff is more fun than having to actually dig it or do whatever. Yeah, I understand that too. Some things I don't like to automate. For instance, I don't use TNT to mine diamonds or anything like that or dig big holes. I do that manually with the pickaxe. I'm not against doing it with dynamite. Maybe I need to play around with some explosives. That sounds fun. Oh no. 30 seconds later, a new Jericho news has finally released, and it's news that Bearded Sloth blew up the entire server after accidentally releasing a giant automated TNT bomber. Dude, I, man, I, for, that would be a great news show. That let's sounds not, accurate. Let's not nuke the server. Dude, I do like Jericho news. Where'd that go? You should do that again. Do it on the Block Party channel. That could be fun. And let kind of these people know what Jericho's it about. They could see the inside. Too much editing. Too much editing. Compared to all the videos I've been I'm the sloth. On I'm though. supposed to be the lazy one. It's not lazy. I just spend 10 hours or more a week editing on other videos. So. Oh, I know. All right, let's get to the listener comments. I know they have a lot to say this week. First one comes from Froggy ZZ. Armadillo for the dub dog armor. Dog armor. Dog armor. Armadillo. Yeah, that's big news this Take week. Take that, crab fans. No, no, I'm not getting into that. I, I think all three mobs were good. Yeah, but the crab fans were toxic, so they deserve it. Some were. I think that's all around there. Our next comment comes from Kangamar. Hi, guys. Took a break from Minecraft for a few weeks as we closed our server after almost two years of playing. But we are back with on a realm with some add-ons to spice things up a bit. And for the next few weeks... I'll let you know which ones we use. This server, I'll tell you to try out the Ambient Sounds version 5 add-on. Now, when you are adventuring, you can hear bird calls and other animals that are suitable for each biome, wind, etc. When you hear the crickets, it's nighttime, so go to sleep. Really handy and makes our whole world feel alive. Enjoy! I've played with that mod on Java Edition. It's a really good mod that should just be in the game. Yeah, all the ambient, ambient sounds, sounds, the birds and because all that. Because if you're just playing Minecraft, even if you have music on, if you're just standing in a forest, it's so creepily quiet. Right? Yeah, that is true. E even we've been outside a little bit. We've had some kitty issues outside. And when you and I sat out there by our barn in the dark and we just listened to the sounds. There's always sounds outside. Always. Yeah. And so for Minecraft not to have that all around you all the time, it does take away from the immersion of the game, right? So that's awesome that you put that into your realm. That's quite an accomplishment that you had your server for almost two years. That's great. That's cool accomplishment. I bet it felt weird to close it down, though. Yeah, I feel like that's every server after it's up for a while. Yeah, it's kind of bittersweet, right? You kind of like, the idea of starting fresh and new, but at the same time, you're going to miss the old stuff, all that. It is nice to have you back in the comment section there, Kangamar. So welcome back. Our next comment comes from Holy Bookworm. Penguins rock. Yeah, but penguins didn't win. Yeah, but they're probably going to add it anyways. They said they're probably going to add so the too. other mobs. Yeah, pretty much. If you watch that, we talked all about this. We actually did an after-hour show, didn't we? And we talked about all this stuff. 
But yes, penguins were cool. I like the penguins. I think the penguins, as far as Q factor, was definitely the best. Would you agree with me? On just I, aesthetics. Just on aesthetics, I still think I'd vote for the armadillo. Really? Okay. Because it's square and... I did like the armadillo. To me, it felt more Minecrafty, if that's a thing. It has that box shape and everything. So I like that part of it. But thank you for that comment, Holy Book Run. Our next comment comes from NS... MSW12. I love the new pick of the armadillo for Minecraft 1.21. It is a very good choice, and we can now use wolf armor. Wolf armor used to be a thing in mods, but now it's a thing to be real feature in Minecraft. Also, I got a different account, so this is not Speedy He's anymore. Okay, so this is uh, this used to be Speedy He's. I remember that name coming across early on. It's been a while though, so welcome back to you also. Yes, well, Wolf Armor was already in mods. I've never played with it. Have you ever played with it in a mod or anything, Little C? I have a little bit. But Did it work not... well? Was it fun? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really use it in mods. I just saw it, but like mod packs were so confusing. I had no idea what was going on anywhere, so. Right. It will be nice to be in the vanilla game and it'll function correctly, hopefully, and they'll work out all the bugs and all that stuff. And you'll be able to rely on it. And there'll be a set way. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. You and I definitely were going for the armadillo. We love the wolf armor. I'm excited. I'm really hoping, though, that they don't miss the opportunity to make them customizable, just like our armor. Or like carpets on llamas and things like that, where you can differentiate colors or like their collars. I hope they don't miss that. Well, this. you can already do it to their collars, so I don't know if they'll do it with the armor. I know. I, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work out. I have to wait and see on that. Maybe they'll revamp horse armor, too, at the same time. Maybe Probably have not. a whole new mechanic all around this. No. No, you don't think so? I don't think they will. I'm just dreaming here. It's okay to dream, Little C. No, because then you're hyping up all the viewers for features that'll never get added. I'm just trying to be like the rest of the content creators out there. All right, thank you for those comments. We love your comments. Keep them coming in. We need them every week for the show. Whatever you want to talk about, Minecraft-related, we want to hear it. Or maybe there's something we talked about on the show that's a little less Minecraft-related or something, and we'll probably take those, too. Just keep them family-friendly, of course. Little C, what do you want to talk about Minecraft this week? So I got Netherite in my hardcore world, finally. I wasn't worried about getting the ancient debris, but getting the upgrading template. Bastions are so terrifying. I didn't even actually go into the bastion. I just went underneath it and went up to the chest and shot the piglin brutes from far away because they can two-shot you even in full diamond. So I try not to mess with those in hardcore without totems. So, yeah. Yeah, and you're doing your whole hardcore without any totems at all. You've decided yep. that. Yeah. That's a big deal. That's awesome. Though. Totems are too overpowered. I agree with that. I don't have that risk anymore i always carry a totem yeah i started building a castle too pretty big castle at my main island which is a castle that i've never built in that style it's got the multiple layers and stuff and instead of it just being a square walls and then nothing on the inside it's an actual castle which i have not built one of these ever i've built a castle but it hasn't been good yeah so I've watched your live stream just a little bit, and I've started seeing the castle you started with. I remember you were talking when you started making, I don't know, towers or something on the front, and you were debating if they were tall enough. Yeah. And I'm over here. Now I'm driving, so I can't type to you and let you know, right? I'm just listening to your live stream. And I kind of glance over here and there, and I see them. They were definitely right at that right height. You got it perfect, I thought. They were massive. And then the one in the middle is even taller. Like, but, the two sides, it's massive. But it looks build. really good. The ratio we'll and it's everything. It's going to be hard to make it the sides look good because it's such a flat stone wall. You always have that problem when you build. You love making the front, and it becomes a facade. Yeah, that's every builder. Because it's just hard to build sides that look good. Is that what it is? Yeah, is, it's hard to build sides. Maybe that look you good. should start with the side and then do the front that and back work later. For planning though, <laughs> it could be fun though. Change and it then, up. And this is me, obviously, not being a builder over here at all, at all. And then I've also been learning how to write lore and kind of writing, almost like TV show writing or like cartoon anime or something writing. 
I've been learning how to do that because Ice Master, one of my friends, started an SMP and we want to make content on it that's kind of scripted, kind of like the Dream SMP. It's loosely scripted, some improv and stuff, but the timeline of like big events is all planned out of like who's going to attack who, when, and stuff to make it more of a show and an entertainment thing. So it's almost like American wrestling. Yeah, it's like that. It's more of like a TV show, like a sitcom. Okay. We're kind of writing it like a sitcom, but without the lines being written out. It's an improv sitcom. sitcom. Got it. And I've been... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to live stream. So the improv is happening live with everyone. And I'm going to do like an hour stream or whatever, maybe once a week as a lore stream. And then I'm going to have other streams where I just do normal Minecraft, you know, mining and grinding. But it's going to be a lot of fun. And we've... The first stream wasn't really written out much. We kind of just knew we want. I just wanted to get started and stuff. But then the Ice Master decided he wanted to start World War Three on the first stream, and so now we have we've written the timeline out now. So the next stream will be better, and it's all planned out. And then I'm gonna edit the streams down into like ten minute, probably like five minute videos. So then, like, if you don't want to watch the whole hour long stream, you can just watch the video of the recap. Got it. That'll be fun. Sounds like a lot of work, though. It is, but it's not just me doing it. There's a lot of other people behind the scenes writing the lore and stuff. Now, Wire Guy has a comment on this in our live chat right now. And he says, without the skills in MC, and that, that is true. That yeah, is true, Wire Guy. Without the skills in Minecraft. Yeah, that's for sure. Now, in your hardcore world, I want to talk a little bit more about that. So you're still not with the dragon. I still haven't fought the dragon, now. I haven't no. fought the dragon at all. Are you making a plan or you're just taking it super slow trying to make it last forever you're having fun building like your castle i just don't yeah i just don't care to fight the dragon because i know once i do that and once i get shulkers in an elytra it kind of makes motivation just go downhill it just roller coasters down from that moment and so i'm just building and doing stuff Got and it. i'm That's building fun, hype though. for the dragon like the more that i wait the more hype and anticipation there is right Nice. For me to go into there and then just die to a bug glitching through the obsidian thing and just dying right there. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be fun. You're going to die from some. Probably not. Maybe an endermen. I might die to an endermen. I think it'll be something stupid. Yeah. Probably. It's falling be... off a ladder or something. It'll probably it'll probably just be a bug because I know Philza lost one of his hardcore worlds. Not the iconic little, the not the iconic Philza death to the little zombie. Right. But the one one of his worlds and he went when he went to the end and everything when he went through the little gate thing with the ender pearl he glitched out to the side of one of the outer islands and this he didn't have an elytra yet so he just glitched out and fell and there was nothing he could do Oof. and then they fixed the bug a week later oh yeah that is really annoying when you have a bug you die from it and if you just would have waited a couple more days it would have been fixed but the big thing is in hardcore it's not like you just died yeah, and lost you, your stuff. No, you you lost the world. Yeah, that's a big deal. All right, I'm thinking a little bit about Minecraft. I wonder what I want to talk about this week. Auto crafters, need I say anything else? No, please don't. I, I've heard enough about these auto crafters. Everyone's like, oh, it's the best feature ever. Rah, rah, rah. I am so looking forward to this. Oh, great. Another one of those. The auto craft is the best feature ever. Yes. So... Of course, I got so excited. I usually don't play in the previews and stuff. I had to load up Minecraft preview this week just to check them out. I've also been thinking about when they incorporated the decorated pots and how you can put items inside now. I've been thinking how I can use that with a comparator and maybe an auto sorter or something like that to incorporate it. And having these two together, the crafter and the decorated pots that hold things, having it combined is just going to be epic to me. So I played around a little bit with that. The decorated pots, I couldn't get it to do what I was thinking in my head. I realized, oh, well, yeah, that's not going to work because it's not a like a hopper where it pulls and pushes yeah. items. It's not going to work quite the same, but there are things I can do. Now I'm thinking of using it somehow in non-stackable items like swords or whatever and being able to separate those out maybe a afk fish farm or something right and separate out the books from the fish and everything else and i'm thinking there might be a way to incorporate that 
Mojang just can't add cool features for normal players because then the technical players will just abuse the crap out of it like Bearded Sloth here just trying to find every tiny little use for features that are meant to just be a cute little feature. Well, the reason I enjoy it, it's problem solving for me and I enjoy the the trip of or the, the journey of solving a problem like that. And now that. you're making all of us solve your problems. Maybe. I have lots of problems, by the way, little C. We know. One sitting across from me in the studio. No? No? Yeah, huh? the creeper plushie is a problem. Yeah, uh huh. Okay. So I played around with that. I was kind of surprised because in the change logs I read, I kind of get the, mm, what do you, summarized version of it. And it didn't mention in that summarized version about needing experiments on. But there is an experimental toggle for 1.21. You do need that to be able to get the crafter, by the way, just so you know if you're going to try that out. We did record, like I mentioned earlier, another After Hours show last weekend. That was fun. We had Holy Bookworm join us in the studio for that one. And we talked all about our reactions to Minecraft Live 2023. We did it right in the afternoon, right after the show. It was very fun. Otherwise, we could talk for hours and hours if we didn't do one dedicated show and we decided to go ahead and put it in the after hours show. So if you want to know more about all that, that's what you have to do. Go become a subscriber. You can listen to it. That's the best way to support us, by the way. We are ad free now. So that's the only way we're Getting any financial support, let's put it that way from this. We'll do it anyways, because we have fun doing this. I did do a stream on the Block Party YouTube again. My survival world. I'm not surviving very well, am I, little C? You would not survive. I bet you wouldn't even pass 10 days in Minecraft Hardcore. Yeah, probably not. If I can make it through that first night and I get a bed, usually I'm okay. Now, this stream, I was thrown off when we started it because you Excuses. came in, you set it up because somebody's stealing my webcam. Because mine broke when I tried so to give it to you. he's using mine and he has to reset up my stuff all the time. And he comes in and, and I'm very thankful for you setting up my OBS. I mean, I can stop setting it up for you getting, if you want. I'm very thankful for this. I can stop setting it up for you. There you go. But you didn't have my audio set up? I didn't realize that. that. I didn't check end. it. I that wasn't something I could have checked. Right. I didn't check the audio that it was set on OBS for the proper device. So I started doing the stream and nobody could hear me at all. And he wasn't reading chat. I sent like five messages. Hey, you're muted. Hey, you're muted. Hey, right. you're I'm muted. trying to get started. I'm not great at streaming. We all know this. So I'm starting to learn the art of that. And that was kind of funny, though, because I'm going through. Well, then we stopped the stream, deleted that stream video and everything. And started over. When I started over, I was thrown off now because I'm kind of starting over, but doing the same thing. And it just really threw me off. So the beginning of that stream didn't go so well. It was kind of comedic how bad I did and broken speech and things like that. It's fun. What's that different from your normal talk hey like now. on the podcast? Good one, little C. Good one. I wasn't trying to make a joke. I know that. But yeah, so, and I did end up dying, so I think that's a one-to-one -one ratio episodes no, to I deaths. No, I think you died twice in that stream. No, just yeah, one. Yeah, no, you died twice, I thought. No, one per episode. I've done two episodes now, two live streams. Yeah, but in the second stream, didn't you die twice? No, just the once. I thought you died. I'm so happy. I th I thought you died in the when it glitched out or something. No, I don't think so. So that's been fun, though, and I am planning on doing that. Saturday afternoons is my goal usually. I'll try to do it once a week. I'm not playing in that world other than when I'm streaming. So that's kind of fun. And I kind of get excited to play in that world again and see what's going on. I don't know what I'm going to do. I still, since I died, I lost my bed. I need to get sheep again. And that's been a really difficult thing in this world for some reason. Sheep don't like the snow, apparently. You're just bad. That might be too. You, I thought... For how long you've played Minecraft and how many hours you have in Minecraft, you'd be able to survive a little bit by yourself. I'm a professional. He can only survive on SMPs with other people. 
I think that might be part of it. I've got so reliant on other people finding everything. It, this is going to be fun when I do get a little bit further in and I need stuff like a well, totem or an dying, elytra. That's never going to happen. I know. It's fun. I got to get set. Once I get settled, we're going to have fun doing mining trips and that'll be a good stream. Just watching me mine. And your amazing commentary of uh, my amazing commentary. We mined a noble, another cobble deep slate. Exactly. All right. That's what I've been doing in Minecraft, though, is playing with the preview, doing that. As far as real life stuff this week, I was home on Monday. We had a church meeting Monday night, so I took the day off. That was kind of nice. I didn't do a whole lot of other trucking this week, really. I mean, did the basics, nothing major going on there. I know last weekend we did go out for some Mexican food Sunday night. I love Mexican food. It's my favorite by far. And then we ended up, this is special news in our real life here. We ended up taking in a feral cat. It wasn't feral. It, uh, a stray cat. Yeah. It, it's it feral. Was, it didn't it, have a home. It I was guess. out there. I don't know what feral means. So I thought it meant, like, we took it crazy. in. It just showed up outside of our barn, right? There was actually two kittens outside our yeah. barn. One was a psychopath. So apparently you guys the week before decided to start feeding these kittens that were out there. Well, yeah, it's cold and they're not going to find food. Once you start feeding them, they start coming back. Yeah. Well, I'm allergic to cats. Get over it. Okay. But I am allergic to cats. And this one out of the two would just sit there and wait for us to come around with the food. The sweetest thing. Look up at you. You could tell it was a little scared, but wasn't scared of us. Let us pet it, come up to it. And I started feeding it with you guys. I tried to catch the other one. The other one had nothing to do We've with us. We've tried to catch the other one so many times and it's not working. And I could tell I'm pretty good at looking at animals and kind of seeing what they're thinking. And plus my obsession, my obsessive compulsive part of my brain looks into all things cats once we get into this groove. I could tell, though, that the one kitten was going to survive just fine, had the instincts to be afraid of things moving and all this and running around and jumping and climbing trees. But this particular one, this black one, was so cute. Sit there. We had to take it in. And I let you guys take it in, even though I'm allergic. And it totally won me over. You don't act very allergic to it when you're cuddling it in your beard. I know. I know. I have started taking allergy pills daily now, though, and I think that has helped. Uh, before, in the past, when we had cats around, I was not doing that. But I definitely tell a difference there. It is an all-black kitten, and we spent the weekend last weekend trying to come up with a name. That was kind of fun, coming up with all these names and debating and talking about it. I had fun doing that. Little C, do you like doing that kind of stuff? It was fine, but you guys did not. No one, we could not come up with a good name for a while. Yep. But we settled on the name Onyx, which if you don't know, Onyx is a, it's a really pretty kind of smooth black stone, I guess, is how I would say it. I don't know what the fancy terms are for it, but to me, that's what it is. It's a pretty black since, name. Since now, we did find out and you found out in your live stream because you're showing the kitten. You're you're totally selling out this kitten for views on your YouTube channel. And it works. It does work. She just sits in my lap while I live stream. It's amazing. And so Wire Guy from the podcast and Jericho SMP and all this stuff says we stole the name from his black cat. I had no idea what his black cat's name was. I didn't know he had a cat. Well, there you go. So apparently now we both have black cats named Onyx. He's showing a very cute picture of this on our live chat. Be sure to join our Discord so you can be a part of our live chat if you're not while we record. And it's adorable. Yes, our this new kitten we have is completely docile. That's what Wire Guy is saying in the live chat. His cat's super docile, very calm and loving. Sorry we took the name. Didn't know that. But that just shows you ah. how much we have in common. We think the same we way, which your, is awesome. We stole your kitten's name. Take that. Let me catch up on some of the other comments. MSW12 says, I'm with you, BS. 
about Mexican food. LOL. Who isn't? Who isn't with me on loving Mexican food? There's people who don't love Mexican food, you know. I don't know if I can be your friend if you don't like Mexican food. Just saying. Just saying. Let's see what you've been up to in real life, other than the cat stuff that I took all the talking time about. The kitten. The kitten. That's that's pretty much it. I haven't been doing too much. I did my last driving class thing. Like, I go in with an instructor and just drive around or whatever. I did my last one. And then I think in a month or a bit more than a month, I'll get my full license. So if you live in Indiana, just watch out because I'll have my full driver's license. So you were taking... Public service announcement. You were doing your last class with the instructor yesterday. I was driving around the same town you were doing this in, in my semi-truck. I made sure to slow down so you would be off the road by the time I got there. Because I was not taking any chances with little C driving out there. <sighs> I'm a good driver. No, you really are. You're an amazing driver. It's going to be fun when you get your actual license here in about a month. I guess. You'll be able to go to like Dollar General and pick up some Doritos or something. This is the this is the peak excitement of my life. When I get my license, I'll be able to drive to Dollar General and buy ice cream. Yes, it's awesome. I Freedom also, of driving is amazing. I've just been editing a lot of video stuff, and yeah. It's so are you editing. starting to like editing? I know no. early on in this content creation, you never liked it. I don't like it. I really you don't? don't. I okay. mean, it's fine. It's just, it's I don't. It's tedious to you? It's more, I mean, editing's okay. I prefer making the story and actually recording. You like coming up with the content, yeah. being the creative guy, and then you'd rather hire somebody to edit for yes. you. Definitely. Yeah, I understand. We all have our different things. I know even with the podcast, I've learned to automate, go figure me, automate things. A lot of the things I need to do for the podcast to make it sound right I wish in the I final could, product. I wish I could automate part the auto subtitles, but I use DaVinci Resolve and they don't have a way to do auto subtitles while making the subtitles look good. Okay, like there's not a plug-in or something like that? Not that I've found. Okay. There's always... I fi figured out in my life, with that kind of stuff, there's always an answer. Sometimes it, co it costs money, though, right? You might need to switch to a different program or pay for a subscription or something. Because those things exist, right? Auto subtitles. Yeah, but, like, the other... The only one that I really know of that does it is, like, $300 a year. And it's not, I wouldn't be able to edit as well as I do now because there's a lot of plugins I already have. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, it's been a crazy week in real life for us and Minecraft. I I really enjoyed playing around with that in the preview this week. That's mostly what I did in Minecraft this week. I think I did do a portal for somebody on Jericho SMP because we require our portal team to make another portal if you need a new one. So I did do that this week. That was fun. It did glitch out though. I found a bug. I went through the portal. It got stuck on the loading screen. We are in bedrock, of course. Got stuck on the loading screen for the nether. It wouldn't move. I ended up just basically shutting down the game. Bedrock moment. And I come back in, and I'm at the coordinates for the nether portal in the overworld in a random place, and a it looked like a creeper must have blown me up in that loading screen time or something. So something bugged out there. Luckily, I didn't die from that creeper explosion, though. So that's good. I haven't had that issue since, though. Then I went through the portal back and forth after I built it. Everything connected right. Don't know what caused it. Maybe I was eating. I know that used to be a bug when you went through nether portals on Bedrock. I haven't seen that in... Quite a while, though. This is why Java is better in some ways, is because it has a lot of these gameplay bugs. There's not as many when it comes to things like that. Yeah, probably. It does seem like these kind of things come and go, though, for whatever reason. And on Java, it's just consistently, like, not buggy if you're playing, even on multiplayer. I don't know why. I don't know why they make Java so much, like, better in that way, and they don't care about Bedrock. Besides it's not about money. care. It's just the way it's, you know, how it's decided or whatever. All right. That sums up our past week. Now it's time for the past week in Minecraft. All info from Minecraft.net. We have Minecraft Bedrock Beta and Preview 1.20.50.21. This is what I was playing in this week. Came out Wednesday, October 18th, 2023. They have additions here. Added the crafter block to the game. Crafter beat. 
can be crafted with redstone dust, iron ingots, crafting table, and dropper. Crafter uses distinct particles when crafting. Crafter has distinct sounds for crafting and failing. Crafter has a blast resistance of 3.5. A comparator connected to a crafter now outputs a signal that is equal to the amount of non-empty slots plus disabled slots. Now, a cool fact that I did figure out on there was it's not about the amount. Like, let's say you have something stackable, 1 to 64. It doesn't matter how many is in that slot. If that slot is has something in it, then it counts as a signal, basically, a redstone signal, if that makes sense. Or if you disable a slot, it counts. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a way to program an output somewhat. I think I like this. Moving items into crafter from hopper or dropper distributes them evenly instead of first filling the first stack. So you have nine slots there. Let's say you have something like a kelp farm going into here, right? And you have tons of kelp. It'll go through the first slot, second slot, and so on to fill all nine with one. And then you can set it to craft and get your, what, what is that called? Your kelp block, I guess. And, or iron ingots or whatever and it'd be a cool way to compact our storage a bit automatically too powering the crafter with redstone signal makes it craft and output the item some changes inverted the direction in which decorated pots wobble when unsuccessfully interacted with so i played around with this a little bit they do have a little wobble which is kind of cool it helps with the immersion there again Mobs that grow up to be adults and are too large to fit inside boats will now jump out. This is kind of a big deal. I think this was probably a way people were trying to get some of these mobs that no longer fit into boats. It's annoying that they made some mobs not into fit into boats because now if you ever want to remove a mob to like a museum or something, it's impossible for a lot of them. Yeah, but I like this. If they're going to do that anyways, they're going to have that mechanic where you can't have this large thing in the boat. You can't get it as a baby, put it in, and then expect it to stay. It will jump out. Enhance the Bloom pipeline to utilize HDR scene information to more naturally emphasize bright pixels in the deferred technical preview. Fixed an issue where shadows from non-existent mobs would be rendered in the deferred technical preview. Fixed a crash that could occur when switching dimensions in the deferred technical preview. Some fixes here, horizontal end rod hitboxes are now rotated correctly. And of course, there's more. We'll have the full change log. Can you link. just read fixes right above what you just said? And then there's some fixes. Uh, They had it listed as changes. Fixed a crash. Uh, I know. A change, not I know. a fix. That's just how they have it listed out. I'm just kind of copying and pasting here, to be honest. And that's okay. Next, we had Minecraft Java Snapshot 23W42A. Also came out Wednesday, October 18th, 2023. Eh, basically the same stuff. Additions, the crafter is a new block that enables the crafting of items and blocks via redstone. The crafter will eject one crafted item at a time when powered by a new redstone signal. Slash pulse, not a continuous signal. Upon receiving this new signal, the crafter will eject the recipe result from the front face if the output result has multiple type of items all the result items will be ejected together so that's talking about you have something like i don't know a cake or something with a milk bucket it'll eject your cake and the bucket the empty bucket the crafter can be oriented in any direction when placed so up down sideways all that so which way it's going to shoot out kind of like a dispenser this is complicated the crafter has a 3x3 three three interactable crafting grid. The crafter's crafting grid slots are toggle toggleable, meaning that the player can change the behavior of a slot by clicking or pressing on a slot with an empty hand. A slot that is toggled cannot hold any items and therefore cannot have items placed into it by other blocks such as hoppers and droppers. Unlike the crafting table, the crafter displays a preview of the crafted item, which will be crafted and ejected on the next redstone pulse, but cannot be manually taken out by the player. So you have to use redstone of some sort to get it to craft. You can't just, it's not just like a UI and a crafting table where you just click on it and it makes it. 
The crafter UI is shared between all players interacting with the crafter, meaning that multiple players can interact with the crafter at the same time, similar to chess and hoppers. The comparator's signal strength is zero to nine, where each non-empty or toggled slot adds one strength. Hoppers can be used to both insert and pull out items from the crafter. Droppers can be used to insert items into the crafter. Moving items in from another block, example hopper or dropper, prioritizes filling items into slots following these rules. Pri prioritize the first empty slot from left to right, top to bottom. If there are no empty slots, then prioritize the smallest stack of the same item. Pick the first if there are multiple. If there is a toggled slot, it will be skipped. The item will then be moved into the container. If the item cannot be moved, it will be ejected into the world. Changes added an added an accessibility option that allows to hide the yellow splash text in the main menu. Added a recovery screen for worlds with missing data. For example, if saving failed due to an unexpected shutdown. The data pack version is now 21. The resource pack version is now 19. My, minor changes to chat component serialization fixes. Various realms, buttons, and texts are incorrectly capitalized. Firework rockets can't be used to break chorus flowers. Decorated pots can be destroyed by projectiles in adventure mode. And of course, many more. All right, that sums it up. I'm really excited about this crafter. It's, it's okay. the big thing. That was the main thing. I do like how they have the little bit more detail in the change logs for the Java edition one. They explain some of that, but yet they kind of summarize in the Bedrock edition one, just adding it without the explanation. So we kind of got both by reading both of them. I like that. Oh, and I do like that they only added one thing instead of all the features we saw in Minecraft Live or several of the features. They only stuck with one major thing, let that ride for a while, get some feedback from that, maybe tweak that in the next one and then add an additional thing and so forth. They have a while before the official update will come out anyways at this point. This is very early stage. I'm looking forward to seeing all the changes in 1.21 though. I'm just looking forward to the new mob and structure. The auto crafter I probably won't use because too complicated redstone to use it and i don't really care to use it it's not as hard as you think once you play around with it you probably should fire up a snapshot or a preview and just play with it it's not as scary as it sounds i know it seems like I there's a lot won't. of details i probably won't go into the snapshot or anything because i'll probably just wait till it releases okay well that's cool too i couldn't wait i was so excited for it now it's time for do 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 listener questions our first question comes from Annie Mae. What part of the game do you think you avoid the most? Building. Yeah. Okay, well, not exactly. No, just yeah. Yeah, you do. I do build things, usually only like farms and functional type of builds, though. That's mostly what I build. I only build things like my house that I did just because I feel like that's what I'm expected to do, I guess. I also don't actually do a lot of caving. That's because last time you went caving, you died. Because, exactly. again, you're new you need to start hosting the noob corner, honestly. it <laughs> That's kind of accurate, unfortunately. It doesn't usually go so well for me when I decide to cave, obviously. You can check out our YouTube channel and see my last live stream video for that one. Mine would be the Bastions. I am terrified of those. Piglin Brutes are crazy overpowered, and I just got that in my hardcore world, as I talked about earlier. And I just stuck under it. I didn't actually go exploring it. I didn't go to the middle part or anything to get the netherite that's probably sitting there. I They're just piglin brutes are so scary because they could just kill you so quickly. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's more accurate for my answer. I just stay out of the nether other than for portals and safe travel that we make safe roads. How and are you ever going to beat the game in your single player world? Actually, that's part of the fun. I'm kind of excited to get further in the game. It's obviously going to take me a while, but I'm looking forward to some of these challenges and I will die. We have the dead score so we can keep track of that on that world, but it'll be fun to see and see how I do react. And maybe I'll get better. Little C. 
We'll see. <laughs> Thank you for that question, Annie Mae. Next question comes from CC or Sierra, as I know her. What active farms beside mob farms are best for levels? I'd say village is the best way to get XP that isn't a mob farm. Because you can just chop down trees and sell them to the guys who buy sticks. Well, you kind of stole my answer. That's basically what I was thinking. Probably some kind of crop farm and then thinking like wheat or potatoes or something and then trade them with the farming villagers. To me, that makes sense. I know sticks are kind of overpowered with that now, right? I mean, I've chopped down, I think the statistics like 15,000 spruce logs in my hardcore world. And some of those were for building, but a lot of it was just selling sticks to villagers. And that's why I have a full beacon of emerald beacon. So, yeah, that's and then some like full books and everything. Yeah, I personally don't do that much with villagers because I see it as game breaking. It takes the challenge away for long term fun. I just wanted to see. I just wanted to kind of show people how game breaking it is. And because this is such a long-term world, I want to have the option to use these, and I'm going to have the option to use the new villagers when they release. Right, and you got to decide for yourself what you want to do and how much of the fun it's going to take away, or and maybe it'll you, add to the fun, And right? even if you make it, you don't have to use it. Yeah, that's right. That's kind of how I am with automated farms, by the way. That's kind of how I like the process of making them. Now, furnace farms also might be a way to go. Yeah, like it's not as make, good as it was there for a while. Like if you make kelp or something and then smelt like thousands of it with an auto kelp farm or something with furnace farms. Right. And because it does build up XP a little bit there and it does take a lot to get the higher levels of XP though. Yeah. Now, as far as just XP and I know it's a mob farm, but at least on bedrock, I feel the ticking nether portal gold farms are the easiest way to get that's XP. not a thing on java but if you're playing java make one of those like nether roof piglin farms or i would suggest an enderman farm in the end those are probably the easiest and best okay and those work in bedrock too the enderman farms now that does remind me though little c i think you have our trident for our gold farm in jericho i don't have it i was looking for it the other day okay i don't know what happened to it maybe it Glitched out and went through the world or something. Welcome to Bedrock. Yeah, who knows? So we got to get another trident for that. But that's what I use on Jericho, especially once they took the furnace glitch where he used to be able to basically get unlimited XP from furnaces. This might sound crazy, but the way I get gunpowder and the way I get XP is I just go outside when it's nighttime in Jericho. I oh, just, just killing mobs? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's how I get XP and I get gunpowder. Yeah, and that's a way to do it. Don't forget the base way of the game, right? The vanilla style of playing. And people are always like, oh, enchants are so powerful. If you don't use any kind of mob farm, any kind of XP farm, that XP, when you hit 30 levels, it feels like an accomplishment every time. And it feels like an RPG game if you play it how the game's intended and not by automating farms. Yeah, that is true. It You can definitely make it last longer. There you is want... a reason why we've been playing since 2014. It's not that we... And we, now I still play Jericho sometimes, not as much as I used to, but I think a lot of that is because we have these players that go in and rush through everything. They get everything available in the shops. It does take some of that fun away. I know I enjoyed the first couple months before we had any nether portal travel. I just thought of another good way to get XP. It does involve killing a mob, but just keep killing the ender dragon because you can just infinitely respawn the ender dragon and drops a ton of XP every time, I think. Yeah, that's a great way for XP, too. They, they drop a lot. And it's not that hard to kill the Ender Dragon, especially in Bedrock. The Bedrock Ender Dragon is easier than the Java one because it doesn't fling you up in the air all the time. Oh, yeah, that is true. I'll be curious how I do if I ever get to the Ender Dragon. I'm curious how I'll do too. in my hardcore world because I forget fighting it on Java. I have, but it's been a while. Yeah, now we do it on Jericho occasionally. And we go through and I'm over there fishing because it's not that much of a challenge, especially when we have a lot of people on. Yeah. And just the bedrock. Yeah. The dragon's easier, I think. But so the how long do you on. think you're away from doing that on your hardcore oh, world? Whenever I get bored of what I'm doing now. Yeah, that's true. You just kind of play it by ear. Yeah. Don't make a plan. I mean, I have the thumbnail for the live stream ready. The ender dragon fighting thumbnail. Right. I just don't know when I'm going to do it. Oh. I, I'm looking forward to seeing that, by the way. 
And then you'll be able to, are you going to go get your wings right away? Yeah, probably. Of course. Got to do that. I just want the elytra because the void, whenever you're in the end, the void's too scary. The void is terrifying and hardcore. That That's definitely the worst way to die there. No. It doesn't matter, does it? The worst it doesn't matter at way all. to die in hardcore just dying. is dying to a llama. That would be bad. That would be very, very bad. I could see me doing this, though, in I my could see BS live stream doing world here. All right, it's been a fun show, Little C. It's been awesome talking about the crafter for me, talking about the kitten. Got to get those kitty listeners out there, right? Everybody likes kitties. Thank you, listeners, for being a part of this. Thank you, live chatters. That's awesome that you're here. If you haven't yet, join our Discord. That's where all the fun is. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show, Holy Bookworms Joke of the Week. What is red and bad for your teeth? A brick. <laughs> really? Really? Yes, a brick would be very bad for your teeth, little C. Yeah, I guess it would be. Here, let's try it out. That's not going to work, is it? All right. You can help support the show by subscribing to the podcast. Find the link in the description to subscribe. It truly helps us out and is super appreciated. Best of all, though, you'll get access to more of us with the After Hours show and, of course, our first 49 episodes, the cringy ones of the Block Party. Help us get the word out about the Block Party podcast by telling everyone about the show. Visit theblockpartymc.com. We want to hear from you. We love your comments and questions. You can email us at contact at theblockpartymc.com or leave us a voicemail or text us at 1-260-222-7240. Thank you for being here. We truly do appreciate it. Make sure to tell everyone about the Block Party of Minecraft podcast. I'm Bearded Sloth, and now I... Gotta eat my coffee. And I'm Little C, and I'm guessing I'm gonna go and not craft stuff?